went on to be a story that absolutely gripped the nation. It is 20 years since the disappearance and murders of Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman in Soham. Well, former caretaker Ian Huntley killed the 10-year-old girls in 2002 and then dumped their bodies in a ditch. Well, Ian Huntley still serving a life sentence, of course. And our next guest, the journalist Brian Farmer, was there at the time and interviewed Ian Huntley many times. Joins us now. Good to see you. Good morning. I mean, it's remar- First of all, it's remarkable to think it's 20 years. I can't quite get my head around that. But what was also remarkable at the time was that Ian Huntley was someone who was not shy when the cameras were about, was he? I mean, he was very much in the thick of it when the search for the girls was underway. That's true. The the footage of um, local people searching and so on shows that he was there. He he obviously wasn't uh, hiding away and he was trying to help with the search. And I mean, he was obviously around too because he was the caretaker at the school where press conferences are held and he was putting out chairs. So, no, he he wasn't hiding away, that's for sure. And what was your impression of him? Was he someone who was enjoying speaking to journalists or did, at the time, did he appear to be very helpful? No. In, 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 I, when I first interviewed him, he, he seemed a little reticent, uh, reticent to let, us in, let me in the house. Um, uh, but, but when we actually sat down and spoke to him, they, he didn't seem particularly troubled about speaking to journalists and certainly Maxine Carr didn't. Um, Maxine Carr obviously had worked with the children at the school. She'd been there, classroom assistant. She happily chatted and, um, no, no, they chatted. They were just reticent, first of all, of letting me in into the door. Was there any point where your alarm bell started ringing? Yeah, well, it, 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 when, when I interviewed him, um, which was on the Thursday after the girls disappeared, four days, the police had said that morning that he'd been one of the people who'd seen the girls walking around Soham and he was thought to be the, I think at that stage, the last person to see them. He, he said he said some strange things. So at one point during the interview, we're talking to Maxine Carr and uh, asking her about her knowledge of the girls from school. And um, we asked her if, she, if, this, if they'd done stranger danger at the school and how did she think the girls would react if a man pulled up in a car and said, I'll give you a lift, girls. And Ian Huntley answered the question in a very agitated way and he said um, Holly would probably get into the car but Jessica would put up a fight. And it struck me quite alarming because how could he possibly know? Um, uh, and the other thing he said, which I, I found difficult to believe, that he said that um, he'd seen the girls late on that Sunday afternoon when they disappeared. He said that Maxine and him had, had been out for a walk with their dog. They had a big, furry Alsatian dog. And, and the dog had gotten muddy and wet and Maxine had gone to have a bath. And uh, he was outside the house washing the dog with soap and water and a bucket. And, and, and that's when the girls wandered along. When we asked, or when I asked what, what did the girls say, he said, oh, they'd asked about Maxine and what she was doing. And I asked him to go through word for word. And what struck me as odd was... Not, not what he said they did say, but what they didn't seem to have said. They didn't seem to have mentioned the dog. And I found it difficult to believe that there would be two 10-year-old girls in the world on a sunny afternoon who would come across a man washing a dog with soap and water who wouldn't immediately be taken by the dog, but they didn't seem to have mentioned the dog. And I, mm. frankly, didn't think he was telling the truth. I just didn't think he was describing a conversation children had. I had a daughter... I, well, I've still got a daughter, but she was eight at the time. I was familiar with girls at eight. Simply didn't believe what he was saying. Mm. So you say you had an eight-year-old daughter at the time, very similar age to, to, to these girls that we're talking about here. How did covering that case affect you as a journalist? Well, I, I mean, sadly, I've covered many... I'm, I'm a very old journalist and I've covered many terrible cases of, of missing children. I mean, one of the things that made me aware of with my daughter was that you, you tend to always think of, of telling children not to get in a car if a man approaches you. But one of the things that made me think and probably made a lot of other people think was that a woman might also be used to entice a child. I remember making me think like that. And also, I think that the horror of it was that they were just two girls who were doing probably what thousands of children were doing on that kind of August bank holiday, just going for a walk around and having a little adventure. 
never have thought they were in any danger at all. It's, it's, they're kind of everybody's child. Mm. And what happened to them is beyond belief, isn't it? I don't know how you protect it. It's